Hi, I'm Anthony Fury in for Ezra Levant. Thanks for watching us. Parti Quebecois leader Pauline Marat is presenting quite the wager to her fellow Quebecers. Do voters in La Belle Provence want to move forward or backwards? The election began on Wednesday and will end on April 7th. Marat has been the minority premier since September 2012, and polls indicate she could become majority premier. The bulk of the spotlight since she took office has been on the Quebec Charter of Values. While English Canada, known for its tolerance and acceptance of difference, was a little surprised by this, it's actually quite popular in Quebec. A January Leger marketing poll shows 48% of Quebecers support the charter. But when you break it down into language category, 57% of Francophones support it. In other words, this election will not be about, say, fiscal issues. Right now, Quebec has the highest debt per capita of all the provinces. No, it will be a culture war. And Miss Marat is an old warrior. She was first a cabinet minister at the age of 32 in René Levesque's government. She's now twice that age, 64. She's held 15 cabinet posts over the years and was deputy premier and finance minister under Bernard Landry's government a decade ago. In other words, time is running out for Miss Marat to accomplish her goals. And just what are they? Well, she said that sovereignty and having a sovereignty referendum is not the, not the main issue, at least not here and not now. But then when? Now, with her as premier, that may be the last shot for her generation to give the old college try once more with feeling. But for this very reason, Quebecers must reject what Miss Marat represents, which is a backward-looking option of Quebec's future. Here's what Quebecers will be asked on April 7th. Do they want to fully enter the 21st century, the global village, and join the rest of us in working together to build a prosperous economy for all, or do they want to be caught up endlessly in petty antics, like sending in language officers to tell restaurant entrepreneurs that they have to cover up the little, the little English lettering, the on-off lettering on valves for water in a kitchen? That really happened. All while their economy falters, they alienate a part of the population, and they have to rely on the rest of Canada through equalization payments to maintain their lifestyle. Montreal's status as an economic powerhouse is not what it once was, Right now, it's probably not the best place to start a business. But Marat's also putting a question to the rest of Canada. She's asking us, will you indulge me in my antics? And the answer, folks, must be no. Now, it used to be that when Quebec had a tantrum, we ran to them. We took them seriously. We tried to work things out because we cared. But since the 1995 referendum, things have changed. Canadians regularly interact with many other cultural and language groups that have become well-established in Canada. The challenges of multiculturalism no longer mean just those three planks of English, French, and Aboriginal. Now, it's certainly been a challenge, and it's certainly going to continue to be one. But we've been, we've been making it work here. One example being how the Conservatives have been honing immigration laws. We need immigrants in Canada. That, that, that's a numbers game. That's a fact. That's not an opinion. It's a fact. We just need to make sure we admit the right ones and that we make it clear what we expect of them. Now, Canadians should not have any patience for, for Pauline Marat stoking some return to a national unity debate. Young urban Canadians who live alongside Canadians of other ethnic backgrounds successfully, well, they'll simply shrug, shrug at the whole culture war and go, hey, what's your problem, lady? And you know what? I, I don't really know what her problem is. And I don't really care. In fact, on that point, it's not time to play hardball with any separatists out there. It's just time to not play ball with them at all. Premier Mal Raw with a majority may make threats. She may kick up a stink, and the rest of Canada, well, they should simply say, eh, get a life. Go focus on balancing your budget and providing opportunity for all those Canadians who live in Quebec. Now I'm joined by the source of Battleground, David Aiken. He joins me now from our Ottawa Bureau. So, I mean, David, I know you're going to be watching this every day as it unfolds. Big part of Battleground Quebec on the show. What do you make of my general assessment of these two solitudes? Well, I know. I think, the, I think you, you, uh, you articulated, I think, what a lot of English Canadians are increasingly saying. We've seen polls on this, that if Quebec does come to Canada somewhere down the line and say, uh, hey, you want to renegotiate the relationship and we, we might want to go, there's a lot of Canadians that say, okay, uh, 
but it's been great and we'd like you to stay, but see you later. I think that may happen. The thing here with this election is we still, we should recognize, we're still a long way from that. Today, Premier Marwa is saying not committing to having a referendum, not saying she will have one, won't, we're not sure. But, here's but, but isn't we, that what she's going to say no matter what, to my true. point? Like, she's not going to throw it out there. But it's true. But here, here's, here's what I find interesting and hopeful as someone who would like Quebec to stay inside Canada is that Quebecers are considering a lot of the same things you and I as Ontarians or Albertans or British Columbians. We all think right now the economy, jobs, that's what's important. That's what some polls by our friends at Leger did yesterday. The economy is number one. I mean, 40, 50 percent, that's the number one issue. The Charter of Values, 5 percent, and sovereignty even less than that. So but then why Quebec does it show that there's such support for the Charter and there's such support for Ms. Maura, and that's her primary issue. Isn't that well, what the Venn diagram tells us? It, true, but this is where I always say Quebec voters are among some of the smartest voters in, in, uh, as a group in the country. And that, yeah, this year they'll put a separatist in and, and then turn right around and vote a Federalist Party in, in Ottawa. Uh, here's, here's how we might interpret that, or this might be a reasonable interpretation, is even Stephen Harper thought Rennie Levesque, the first separatist premier, ran a good government. He got rid of corruption. He lowered spending. He got control of the bureaucracy. Stephen Harper actually said that on the campaign trail in 06. That was his pitch to Quebecers. Stephen Harper said, I'm going to be like René Levesque. I'm going to get rid of corruption, transparency, and accountability uh, of government. And Quebecers have seen that. They have seen some good governments that call themselves PQ. Even though they may say, I don't want your separatist agenda. I want you to run the government. I want you to worry about the economy. So. I would watch closely what Marwa is saying about the economy, about how she's going to create jobs. It is a bit of a mix, I got to tell you, of, you know, she does want to get rid of the deficit. She does want to balance the books, but maybe not that fast, with a little bit of spending programs here and there. In that sense, her program is a lot, of, a lot like, you know, small L liberal governments across the country. Watch for that. The whole independent stuff, yes, there's a core base of her supporters that that's all they care about. But she knows the election is going to be won or lost, doing what voters are interested in. They're interested in the economy. But, and, but, but David, just to pick up on that, I mean, aren't they, isn't Quebec politics trying to get rid of the old guard right now anyway, so they can leave behind also the whole scandal conversation? And I'm not trying to embroil her in all this, but isn't she emblematic of the old guard, or do they not see her like that? That's what I don't get about the Quebec political Well, she's, I census. think she's definitely of the old guard. I mean, you pointed out she's been there like since 81. She's been a fixture in the National Assembly. Uh, strange enough, in this election, this is not the election about the old guard corruption, uh, uh, stale stuff. That was the last one, the 2012 election, when it was Jean Charest uh, versus uh, Pauline Marois. Uh, this time around, it's, the, it's, it's three sort of leaders from the same generation. Uh, uh, Monsieur Legault, Philippe Couillard, the liberal leader, they're both 56. Marois, 64. Um, uh, Legault used to be, on Marois' team, used to be a, a PQ leader. Um, and right now, the C that's, that's the Coalition Avenue de Quebec, the CAQ. There isn't a lot of appetite for that new party. A lot of Quebecers just going back to, well, you know, let's take a look at the PQ or the Liberals. Remember, this, the, what we just finished up is only the second minority government in Quebec's history. It's a real rare thing for Quebec to have a, a minority government. Um, and so Quebecers may want to go back to a majority. And I say all this, and I preface this too, Anthony, let's not forget. Yes, we're talking at the beginning of this campaign about a poll that shows that Marois, it is hers to win, that she would win a majority. But we've seen Quebecers time and again, en masse, just go <laughs> in, one, in one campaign. And, and to pick you know, up so on that, do, David, do you think, for instance, the students who really took on Sheree and then she sort of appeased them at the beginning, she didn't give them fully what they wanted, I mean, do you think that's going to become... Uh, uh, an element here in sort of redirecting the campaign narrative. Well, and here, Quebecers, much like uh, the rest of Canada, it's old people who vote, young people don't. I mean, that's just the stats. That's the trend over the last uh, couple of decades. The older you are, the more likely you are to vote. Inter interestingly enough, as our friends at Leger noted, that boomers in Quebec are PQ supporters. It is the older generation that supports the PQ. Younger people tend to support, well, maybe Quebec Solidaire gets some, that's another separatist party, gets some younger support. They, they'll support liberals. They might support the uh, CAQ, but younger people don't tend to vote uh, in, in those quantities. So when you ask about those student protests, so yeah, they love to go to a protest. It's fun. Hang out with your friends. Go down to a street rally, but go to the ballot box. Oh, no, uncool people. Old people do that. But of course, the only way you make change uh, in our society is with a check mark beside somebody's name on voting day. Aging population might work out well for Ms. Marat. David Aiken, thanks for your analysis. Thanks.